Um, so I'm the medical producer for BBC News, so I make pieces about medical science for the BBC and I uh, have done it for well, about 14 years. And I've done quite a lot of pieces about all the of the years. And this year we we're also making a kind of series is a slightly grand curve, but several pieces about organ donation because England, sorry, is transforming the way it does organ donation in a way, moving to presume consent. And so Alexa, who I've known for some time, had asked me if I'd show one of the films. I think, you know, she thought it would be nice to see some real people that have gone through this. The films I'm making currently about black and ethnic minority donation and about donors, donors' families say no, are still in the work. So I said, let's show the one about presumed consent that we made that was in December. And this is part of a kind of very long project that we're trying to follow some patients through the journey of being on the waiting list and then having their transplant. And so this is mostly features um, one of those patients and it also talks about launch and consultation to presume consent, which is changing from an opt-in system to an opt-out where everyone is presumed to be a donor. I'd say a couple of words as well. <laughs> um, the reason when Rachel sent me this, I thought it was a really brilliant thing to show, even though it's looking at bits from the recipient's perspective. I think it brings up all sorts of interesting and slightly messy issues that hopefully arise during this conference. So what you're going to see is uh, this lady here, Adette, when we started filming with her, she was waiting for, uh, she's diabetic, she has type 1 diabetes, so her diabetes has caused her kidney to fail, which is the reason that a lot of people are on the kidney transplant list. And so she was waiting for a dual organ transplant kidney transplant. We ended up putting her in this piece because, like I said, at the moment we have an opt-in system in England, we have an opt-out system in Wales. So that means that unless you don't want to be a donor, you do nothing. And if you don't want to be a donor in Wales, you have to sign the opt-out register. October, Theresa May announced that she was going to move England to that system too. And so uh, she announced at the conference and they launched a consultation in December, trying to march, but not about whether we should do it, but about how we should do it, which has been a little controversial. The, the background to this is that this was considered in the UK 10 years ago. They had a big task force, they looked at it, and in the end they decided not to do that. And what they did instead was completely overhaul the way we do organ donation in this country. What used to happen is a lot of people used to get a list of potential donors. Sometimes just the infrastructure wasn't quite there and the sort of responsibility, I guess, and you talk to clinicians then and there was a slight uneasiness about the whole kind of set up of someone's dying so you ask someone for their organs I think is the case really and so they transformed it to have a better way to identify potential donors and a system of specialist nurses that went and liaised with those families talked about consent and then guided them through the whole process and it's been quite amazing that it's transformed our donor system I would say about 10 years ago we had about just under 800 deceased donors a year, and the latest figures show that the UK, because it is a UK-wide system, had, had 1,500 deceased donors. And that has resulted in about 50% increase in actual transplants. And so what we're talking about here is moving to what Wales has. They have a system where if you don't want to donate, you have to sign a register to say no. And then when they go in to have the conversation with the families, the families can still say no, but the presumption is that a person has consented, which is causing some consternation because some would argue, Nuffield Council for Bioethics, for instance, would argue that that is not consent. That is just an absence of knowledge of consent. But we are forging ahead with this, as well as the consultation, the government is supporting a private members' bill, which is a little unusual. And so that is going to be the legislative vehicle. For it. We will see. Uh, the, the evidence for Wales is that, that it makes no difference. It's, it certainly does not increase donation. Some fears are that it might change the contract and change the nature of it, of the nature of the gift. NHSBT say, well, you know, it will change the nature of the conversation and give us a different starting point and the families can still say no. So this is the piece we made to mark that moment. Well, I'll just say one highly last thing, because I spoke to you about yesterday. One of the reasons I was really interested in this is this project is because we do a lot about that, the fact 
factual things about the nation, and we don't really get into the emotions of it in news. It's very much about, you know, this saves lives and this will help people, and, you know, therefore it's a good thing. And obviously, transplantation is a good thing, but we never get into the slightly messier side. And I called Adet yesterday because we tried to get into a bit of it actually, the emotion, that experience of being on the waiting list. And as you can see, that whole palaver that she does, she does dialysis at home. So she hooks herself up at night, she pumps fluid in over a sort of eight hour period, and that dominated her life. That's all she did, pretty much. So I called her yesterday and just, you know, make sure everything was alright and she hadn't died or something, which is always a risk. She's doing great. She said it's five months to the day since she had a transplant, and she's physically just liberated and she feels amazing. But the thing that she hadn't anticipated was the emotional transformation. And it's not about, I've got a organ of a, a person that's died in me. She said she dealt with that within a few days. What she didn't anticipate is that she went home a couple of weeks later and they turned up and they took all of that equipment away. And that thing, that dialysis thing and the checking her blood that had just, not just dominated her life, but she realised defined her life for the last year, was gone. And you think... That was great, that is amazing, and it is. But she said she's feeling kind of lost. She doesn't know who she is anymore because that had become her life. I, you know, I, she will get there, but she is really grappling with that because she's had that taken away with her and she just doesn't know how to deal with it. And I thought that was a really interesting thing that we often don't get into in news. And I, you know, I will try and revisit her, I think, because we often bury that emotional side of things when we do reports about about transplantation. You know, I think this project is really interesting for kind of those reasons and that really brought that home to me when I spent two years ago. It's a shame we didn't think to invite her to <laughs> She's up in uh, Liverpool. She lives. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.